Yeah. <laughs> I had one and someone stole it. Alright, Looker. Yeah. Uh, so last presentation of the day, last but not least. Wow, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. You know it's the I know it's been a long day. I know it's the screen. You just make sure I'm not walking. Chris, if you give me the undivided attention for the next 15 minutes, I will, I promise, give you a value that's greater than your attention. So I'm going to be going through some things. Being that, that this is a company founded on biblical <laughs> principles, I love biblical principles, and I believe that they either help or ruin our life on a regular basis if we don't have an understanding of them. And what I want to show you in this presentation is that there are a lot of biblical principles in recruiting and sales. And I like to, you know, God sees things from the end to the beginning. And so... I'm going to take you through all of these steps of recruiting from the end to the beginning and then back to the end again. Because I want to give you a complete understanding. Some of the information that I'm going to be sharing with you, you already know. What I hope is that I can connect the dot, that I can put in a missing piece of the puzzle, that you can have an aha moment. And that there's something that you can take away from this that you'll be able to apply not only to your recruiting, not only to your real estate business, but to your personal life, as these principles are foundational. And when things get complicated and run away from you, they always say, let's go back to the basics. And so that's what we're going to do in this little journey. So I'm Stephen Powell from California. We're going to talk about the recruiting life. And before we go in it, this is my icebreaker. I like to say that I didn't choose the recruiting life. The recruiting life chose me. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so anyway, there's three foundational biblical principles of recruiting, the most important of which is the law of sowing and reaping, which the world calls cause and effect. And I want to prove to you that this particular foundation runs through the very fabric of time itself. And so we, as people, were given a tool called time that is either our friend or it is our enemy. I call it our frenemy. What we believe to be reality in this current moment is one part thoughts and decisions that I sowed in the past that I'm currently reaping, and one part thoughts and decisions that I'm currently making that I will reap in the future. To prove that point, and, and about October of 2012, I sowed a decision to join Fathom Realty. And now here I am in North Carolina. That decision transcended time. <clears throat> there was an effect from that decision that was waiting to manifest as fruit of this moment. Some decisions that you make are for the moment. Some will impact you right into the future. And so when we make our decisions, we need to be careful. We need to think them through because they can have a lasting impact, positive or negative. The law of averages. You may say, I've never read that. I don't remember reading that. Before. Well, this is in the parable of the sower. There was a sower that went out to sow seed. He sowed some by the wayside. He makes a trip around. He makes it to the stony ground, the thorny ground. And then some falls on good ground, and it brings forth some 30, some 60, and some 100. So the law of averages states that when you do something with repetition, a ratio will begin to appear. So many of us do not have results in our recruiting or in our sales life because we have not developed the discipline to create a repetition so that a ratio can appear. Interestingly enough, when you, when you read the parable of the sower, the sower starts sowing his seed by the wayside. I was always fascinated by that. I, I, I wanted to know, well, what is the wayside? And it's the road by the field. You're not even in the field yet. So many of us, when we start our journey, we start off, we're sowing our seeds. We're not seeing results, but see, we haven't even made it in the field. And we've got to go through the process 
of going into the stone, going into the thorns, overcoming the disappointment, disciplining the disappointment, so that we can make it to the good ground through the discipline of putting forth the practice so that we can develop the fruit that we so desire. Going the extra mile. This is one of the biggest things, and I'm gonna use this as an illustration. <laughs> We think backwards. We think in terms of what we can see outside of us, not knowing that our reality begins internally with our feelings, with our thoughts, with our words that we have to live with this fruit. And so whatever you give has to come back to you multiplied. That is the principle for whatever measure you measure, we measure back to you. So what you feel is being sent. What you think is being sent. What you say is being sent. What you do is being sent. So what you have to ask yourself is, do I really want this back? Do, do I really want this feeling back? Do I want this thought back? Do I want these words back? Do I want this action back? Because once I release it, it has to return back to me, but it will come back multiply. So all of these principles have both a positive or a negative aspect in your life. And so now we're gonna start through the process backwards of recruiting. These things are the effects of a desire that you've started off with. So we're working backwards. So this is your car payment, your groceries, enjoying a night out with a, your, your significant other or just uh, your favorite fast food. So, but what really is that? That would be your recruiting bonus. You cannot get those things unless you first obtained this. Okay, so we're working the chain backwards. Before you got the recruiting bonus, onboarding sent an email welcoming your agent to Fab. Before the agent got the email, you uploaded the documents into Fathom Wiki. Before you uploaded the documents to Fathom Wiki, the agent said yes. Before the agent said yes to join Fathom, you had a presentation. Either you did a webinar, or you met with them one-on-one -on -one for coffee, or they visited the website, but at some point they saw information that caused them to make a decision. The conversation took place before the presentation. This is where the invitation occurred. Now, there were a lot of great uh, things brought up by the panel, and a couple of things that I want to say about recruiting is that we are sorted. You can't say the wrong thing to the right person. And who we're looking for are people that are looking. We want to talk to people who have ears to hear. And the reason that we get stuck on that one person that has the objective about the office is because we don't have a lead management system of which we loaded a large contact list. Our list is too small. We've got it in our mind. And because that one person is saying no to us, we spend all of our time trying to convince them, getting stuck. Organized personal initiative. And now this leads us to what originated it. The goal, the desire. What do you want? A goal consists of three things. My favorite book says that without vision, you perish. Without knowledge, you're destroyed. And without discipline, you die. And it's very interesting when you put it in, in an aspect of goals, and I'm going to prove this to you. This applies for recruiting, sales, anything. If you'd like to be a black belt in karate, first off, you need to see, well, master so-and-so did it. I believe that I can do it. Michael has over 100 agents. I believe that I can have 100 agents. That's a vision. Okay? Now I need to know how. Personally, I might not know right now what I need. So there's either two things I can do to gain the knowledge. 
I can study, I can practice, or I can form a mastermind with someone who does know. In the analogy of being a black belt, I am borrowing the knowledge of the master and, and learning what he knows so that I can acquire that. When it comes to recruiting, you are working with the recruiters or other individuals that have the experience to get to what you want. But if you don't show up every single day and practice, you'll never have that black belt. If you don't show up every single day and sow the seeds to recruit, you won't grow. And so the other three principles of recruiting, going this, without vision you perish, that's what you find out in Proverbs 29, 18, if you'd like to look at that further. People are destroyed for lack of knowledge, Hosea 4, 6. And he will die for lack of discipline, Proverbs 5. 23. So in putting this together, now moving forward, what do you want and why? What do you see yourself? What do you want from Fathom? What do you want to give Fathom in exchange? Remember, you first have to give to receive. The world is framed on first giving and then receiving. So what service do you want to give? What vision do you want to give in order to get something back? Do you want more income? Do you want freedom? Do you, do you want to serve more? Do you just want to help people? Do you want recognition? Would you like to be up on the panel? Would, would you like to be on the leaderboard? Do you want more time freedom? Do you want to impress Marco? <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys edit that? <laughs> Yes, it can happen. <laughs> where do you see, here's, here's, a, here's a question. Where do you see your district one, three, or five years from now? See, because regardless of whether you make a decision to take action or not, time has to go forward. So if one year, two year, three years goes by, will you turn around and your district is still going to be at 10, 20? Because if you want something different, you have to do things differently. Some things you need to know, knowledge-wise, for recruiting. Who is my lead? Well, your MLS is a good start. The agents around you. Some of my best personal recruiting came from agents calling me about my own listings. Many of you district directors are top producing agents. You're getting phone calls. So when an agent calls you asking about a listing, do the buffini, oh, by the way, how long have you been with Keller Williams? And my favorite, which I'm glad it's coming back, was, are you making at least 90%? <gasps> You're not. Oh my gosh. We need to get together. When can I get when can I take you to coffee? That is how I really got the majority of my agents to start off. And you'll be amazed at utilizing that on your cycles, how effective it is. What customer relation manager? You can use REW, and I'm, and I'm so glad that Michael brought it up. You have to track who you're talking to and when. You cannot use your mind as a filing cabinet. It won't work. See, because we're looking to find the person when their clock is at midnight. Okay, you may call them the first time and it's three o'clock in their life. They're not ready. The next time that you see them, it may be five o'clock. They're not ready. But at some point in time, if you keep calling on it, and it may take two years. My, my longest prospect took two years. But had I not kept track in a database, I would have completely forgot that I ever talked to him. Who wants to, who wants to, to chase after somebody for two years? I do, because you know what? It was worth a lot of money to me. I, I love every month when Marco sends me some, some money. Because, and this is where I'm going to come into that, back to that biblical principle of going the extra mile, and I have a, a story to tell you. Form. This is great for the conversation. Form is family, occupation, recreation, and your message. So if you can practice asking questions based on that and use that kind of as a guideline template 
to begin practicing asking questions. Remember, in sales, the same is true for sales that is recruiting. Whoever is asking questions is in control of the conversation. So when you're in a recruiting situation, if you're asking a lot of questions, you are in control of the, of the conversation and you are able to find out exactly the pain of that individual so that you can say, Fathom can fix this. So you want the end again? Message, your message. Basically it is that you've gone through, uh, you know, they've identified and let's say they say, gosh, you know what, I have six kids, I just don't get enough time. And you know what, I know exactly how you feel. I have a family myself. And because I want to fathom, I have more time. So you're, you're finding out that the need, <coughs> and then your message is, how can fathom fix it? Okay, feel, felt, found. This is a, a, just one of the most amazing tools ever to overcome a whole lot of objections that you ever get. It, it's so that you don't argue. So you know what? Gosh, I, I know how you feel. And I felt the same way about it. I know how you feel about needing an office. I felt the same way. It took me a couple months to join Fathom. But what I found was my business increased. So we can completely pivot. Instead of hitting them head on, we can pivot those objections with feel felt found. And then the onboarding process. We need to know how is our onboarding process. And so we've gone through that backwards and now we'll go through it forwards again to wrap it. And, and by the way, Marco likes results. So just to put that in there again. Okay, so organized personal initiative. You, you create the first leg of the stool, you create a vision, you decide what you want for your district. You decide that, you know what, in five years I want to be invested with Fathom, I want to own enough stock that I can retire. $18 a share. Right? <laughs> but you have to see that. Not only have to see it, but you have to believe that it's possible. And you can look around the room to see other district directors that are already where you want to be. And if they've done it, it's possible for you to do it. And that's the great thing about being human. If a human being has already accomplished it, then it's possible for you to do it. If you, and if you have the desire to do that thing, the power is in you already to do that thing. And if you do that thing, you'll have the power. That's kind of how it works. The best way to overcome procrastination, because procrastination is why we don't prospect. We put it off. Procrastination is a feeling. We feel it. <coughs> we make a decision. You know what, I'm not going to do that. And so to overcome it, the very, very best way is just get out a piece of paper and write a to-do list. <coughs> write five to six things a day cross them off. You have to get into the mental habit of accomplishment. Once you get into that, it creates momentum. There, there, the <coughs> physics says what's in motion tends to stay in motion. So when you can overcome that and you can begin, you tend to stay in that direction. And so when you're, you're constantly in this habit to be efficient, just with the simple to-do list, you'll be amazed at how your life transforms. Because you're taking it out of your mind. You're not using your mind as a filing cabinet to keep track of things, and you're actually, you have a track that you can actually go and say, wow, you know what, I really got a lot done today, and it feels good. Your MLS list, your click-through reports from the emails, agent closings, agent referrals, Fathom Careers. Those are the places that you're going to gather your contact list. The bigger your list, the less you'll hold on to the one person that says, I need an office or not right now. Because when your list is small or it's only in your mind and it's one or two people, you protect it. You get rejected once and it's like, well, I only got like 10 people. And so you don't talk to them because you don't want the rejection. That's the psychology of it. Lead management. Use a spreadsheet. Use REW. It really doesn't matter which one you use. It just matters that it gets used. You'll be amazed at what this will do not only for your real estate business, but what it will do for you for your recruiting. The conversation. The conversation is so 
critical. It's your first, it's your impression. Um, sometimes it's tempting just to go right in and, hey, you want to join Fathom? You know, there's a lot of different things that can happen. But if you don't establish a rapport, if you don't create some type of, of relationship and dialogue, you may go ahead and get the appointment, but you'll lose the opportunity to ever follow up again because you'll completely burn them out. So the art of conversation, I don't know anyone that's born with knowing how to do it. It's something that we all have to go through and put into practice. And let me tell you, it's not fun to practice. It's not fun to feel uncomfortable. It's not fun to look at a script and, you know, you, you feel like you're reading from a script and it's coming across to the other person like you're reading from a script. But eventually, if you put the discipline in, it will begin to flow from you as if it was natural. But that only comes from practice. And that comes to that third leg on the stool, the stool which is discipline. And only you have the power of that. The presentation. Michael had mentioned, and, and it went around in the panel, having a good presentation. There are quite a few. Uh, Josh put a great PowerPoint together that's available for download. Um, if you're good with PowerPoints, you can make one. When I first started recruiting, I made my own. I load it into my uh, laptop, I take that with me, I sit down with the agents and I go through all of those things. And I do the same thing that Michael does. I'll segue from when I, when I come to single property websites, I'll actually go in and I'll show them how cool single property websites are, all the stats and how easy it is to use. And so it's, it's to, to tie the visual, but also the psychology, through the presentation, I try to condition them into saying yes as many times as I can by saying, does that make sense? Yes. Does that make sense? Yes. So I try to get them to say yes as many times as I can through the presentation so that when it comes time, you know, what would you like to do? You ready? Let's get, let's sign up. Yes. Yes. <laughs> it's your ratio. And that's why he has eight out of 10 ratio, but he didn't start out eight out of 10. Nobody starts out eight out of 10. No one. You have to start out at one out of 10. But the ratio will appear and, and it will increase over time because your skill will improve. So the agent said yes, best day. Yes. <coughs> you uploaded the documents. The, the welcome email was sent to the agent. You got your cheddar and you get to buy your stuff. So I want to just tell you a quick story. Because I'm going to go to this, which is, I think, the foundational final law of all your efforts. Whatever it is that you choose to do hard will eventually become easy. Whatever you choose to take easy will eventually become hard. So the amazing thing about recruiting, it's kind of like farming. Remember, we started this off with the law of sowing and reaping. You know, a farmer plants a seed, he wouldn't, unless he got a bushel for a cup, it wouldn't make sense for him to plant. Why would you plant a seed if you're only going to get a seed back? And so the farmer goes out to his field, he clears the, the land, he gets everything ready, he removes the rocks, he plants the seeds, he waters it. He's doing a whole lot of work of which it appears he's being gypped. He's not being compensated. But at some point in time, the law of compensation kicks in and meets the farmer, or his efforts can't go any further, and he begins to have his efforts multiply. The same is true with you and your fathom business. Up front, it's a lot of work, and it feels like you're not getting compensated for it. You're a farmer. You're farming an area. But I will tell you that it will begin to turn around. The law of compensation will kick in, and you will begin to see fruits of your labor and you will enjoy the residual income because you know what if a month goes by and someone didn't come in and you've got 30 agents and you've got 10 closings you know you're going to get a check i've enjoyed it i gotta tell you i, I worked very very hard at the beginning with fathom and i will admit i took it a little bit easy because i was enjoying the fruit of my labor and now it's time to to kick it back up a notch again because now I, I have a bigger vision. Coming here, seeing what, seeing the bigger vision of the leadership, seeing what we have available to us with equity, I have a bigger vision. 
understanding how the principles, understanding that we already that we did. Everybody that's here has an equal playing field. Whether in two years you're you follow Fathom over the gap, that's entirely up to us to whether or not we're ready to be disciplined, whether or not we're ready to pay the price, even though that when we go every single day and face rejection after rejection after rejection. It seems like we're not being compensated. It seems that we're doing more than what we're getting paid for. The truth is, is that you can never do more than what you're getting paid for, ever. It's an illusion. That's why Jesus said, go the extra mile. Because when we go the extra mile, we're putting in, we're, we're making a deposit that always has to come back. And it's only for a moment that it seems that we're on the short end. So, you can, have, you can only have two things. You can either have the fruit of your labor, which you get to enjoy all the things that you desire, or you can have excuses that you get to use every single day. But you only get one or the other. And it's up to each one of us to decide which envelope we want to hold. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. So you have to make a, a decision to stand that this is how it's going to be. And no matter how I feel, no matter what anybody says, my district is going to the top. That's it. Thank you so much. Before we close, um, 